Hey everybody, <laughs> welcome to my live stream. I'm going to be uh, showing you my new uh, Jack K5 uh, interlock sewing machine. I'm just going to do uh, basically like a general overview of the machine, uh, look at some of the accessories and stuff that come with it, and at the very end we'll do just a little bit of a test sewing on it so you can see kind of what it looks like. Um, so we'll start off with the machine. You can see it's right here behind me. Uh, I'm not going to turn it on until later just so I can show you some stuff. Um, so with the Jack K5, it's a fully automatic machine. Um, you can lift the presser foot automatically. It can trim the threads and stuff. Uh, I got some thread trimmers and a wiper and stuff. Um, so general overview of the machine. Uh, we'll start, I guess, from this side, from, uh, I guess, where you would be right to left, left to right for me. Um, so if we open this, we have the differential feed. I'm just going to grab a... Uh, Another camera here, so I can show you that. Um, there we go. Actually, here we'll go. This view, this view there. So you can adjust the differential feed. There's a little bit of instructions on there. Uh, it's basically you can adjust the differential feed with this here. Right now, it's set pretty, pretty normal for most fabrics. But the differential feed is adjustable. And uh, then if we come over here, uh, you have the presser foot pressure. So you can adjust the presser foot pressure depending on what kind of fabrics you're sewing. There's a little ring on the outside. You can, uh, that's basically to lock it and then you adjust the presser foot pressure with this. Uh, pretty basic. Stitch length is adjustable on the bottom. Everything right now is set according to um, how it was with the factory settings. So uh, the stitch length is currently set to like three, just just below three and a half on the stitch length. Left to right, so left, then center needle, right needle, uh, top thread, and then the lower looper. So for the lower looper, um, like I said, I'm not going to get into the threading for it, but you know it loops through here. You can move this out so you can see what you're doing, how you can thread it. And then that's the adjust. You can adjust the uh, cutter as well for cutting the threads. Um, obviously, this opens just like any other uh, industrial overlock machine. And then you have your tensions here for the thread, and obviously your panel. This is the uh, you know the difference between the K5D and the K5UT is that the uh, K5D is basically just. Uh, it's not the automatic one, so it just has like the direct drive, desensor for direct drive, but so does this. And then the UT is more for the automatic functions. So on the automatic functions here, um, maybe I should grab my other camera here so you can see a little bit closer view. So on here, I have a reset button, uh, volume button, because it does give you voice feedback when you're doing stuff. You have the ability to um, put the presser foot up, so automatically it'll put the presser foot up whenever you stop. So even if you're in the middle of a seam and you want to have the presser foot automatically come up every time. So you, um, then there's the option if you hold it, this button here is if you want to have the presser foot raise whenever you um, cut the thread. So at the end of a seam, maybe you know you you want to cut the threads, maybe you want to keep the presser foot down, or maybe you want to put the, have the presser foot automatically come up. So that's what that button, uh, this one here, would do if you hold it. And you have um, different levels for the LED light, which I'll show you in a bit. And then the uh, option to automatically cut your threads um, when you hit the back part of the pedal or not. So obviously, you know, the pedals look like this. And if you sew regularly, you're going to hit on this part of the foot. And then if you want to cut your threads or lift the foot, you uh, hit the back part of the foot here. It's also got a another pedal so you can uh, lift the foot manually if you want to do it that way. Um, so going back to this, then we have a whole bunch of different um, parameters and stuff. So this is the parameter button. You can see the speakers right next to it. Um, and the parameter button, there's like up and down, left and right. So there's a whole bunch of different parameters and stuff that you can set. And uh, in order to show you some of those, I'm going to turn the machine on. So as you can see, 
the default setting is to uh, Chinese language, but we can change that using parameter 99. So we just press and hold this. We can arrow up. To 99. So it, if you set this to zero, then it's not going to give you voice feedback. Uh, one is Chinese, and then two is um, for English. And then we just press P to set it. So now we can see. It's giving us instructions in English now. Um, another one that I like to change right off the bat uh, is parameter 98. Parameter mode, voice language options, voice volume adjustment. So the right, the, right, right, right. The volume is um, by default set all the way up, which I find way, way, way too loud. So I down, down. like to turn it down to two, Setting done. which is a lot more. Maybe you can't tell too much on the video, but uh, it does make a difference and it is a lot nicer to have at a lower volume. Um, some other parameters that I like to set are parameter 56. Um, I might show you that later. Parameter 56, what it does is when you turn the machine on, when you first start turning the machine on, um, parameter 56, what it does is it will initially um, run the needle down and then up to make sure that the needle is all the way in the up position. A lot of people find that annoying. I find it annoying when you start the machine and all of a sudden it's just moving. Um, so if you adjust parameter 56, you can actually get it to stop doing that. So it won't actually do that um, initially when you start sewing. And then another one is parameter three, parameter zero three. And that one just adjusts um, the up or down needle position. So I'll show you that later when we do the demo, where right now I think I have it set that every time you stop sewing, the needle will always be down. The needles will be down into the fabric, um, no matter where you stop the pedal. It'll always make sure that it stops with the needle down. But you can adjust that and have it so that the needle always stops up. And the way you adjust that is through um, parameter three. There's actually a display I'm going to show you again on here. Um, I'll just grab this. So if we see, actually I'll just do this here. Um, on here, this little icon here, actually right now it's set to down. You can see that the needle looks like it's below the fabric. And that um, that's what you adjust through parameter three. So if you see that right now it's set to down, if we adjust parameter three. So there you go, you see how this icon changed? And now it's showing you that it's always going to stop with the needle above the fabric. And if you can see right there, that, that little that first icon, the needle changed. So I'm going to change it back. Parameter mode. Needle right, right, right. Down. Setting done. And there we go. You can see that it's stopping with the needle in the down position. Then obviously the trimmer icon, right now it's set to lift the presser foot after I cut and it's set to um, lift the presser foot whenever I stop um, for in the middle of a seam and that's basically it. Voice off. Voice on. There you go, that's what that does. And then if you want to reset everything back to zero, you just put the reset button so that's kind of a handy little feature there. So, uh, moving on, I guess. Um, yeah, that's a general overview of the machine. It's a pretty standard um, industrial overlocker, apart from that. Apart from the fact that it's a, it's a pretty wicked machine. It's got a lot of automatic features that make it really nice to use. So, uh, we'll get into what are some of the included accessories that come with the machine. Um, so, just give me two seconds. So, I'll leave you with this view. Um, actually, we'll go to this. So there's different accessories. If you read the uh, user manual, in the user manual, it shows a bunch of different optional accessories that you can get for the machine. 
Um, it turns out that some of them are actually included with the machine. So when we, uh, when I talk about the accessories and stuff, I'll show you which ones are, are included. So that, that was a nice uh, little surprise to see that some of the accessories are actually included. Um, so first things first, we'll start, I guess, on this side here, and then we'll work our way that way. Actually, let's get rid of this. These are just tools. Um, I'm going to grab that little bin. Just stuck. Just so how we clear this, uh, clear this space up a bit. So this is how the oil comes now. Um, in the old machines, like it comes basically in a pack like this. You just uh, tear off the top and then you pour the oil into the machine. It's 600 milliliters, which uh, gets it right to, um, here, I'll show you on, on here actually, uh, the oil level on the machine. Um, there's a little window that you can see in there that thing there it's a lot easier to see when you're not uh, holding a camera but basically once you um, fill the oil uh, it gets the oil right between the two lines so there's two lines a high level and a low level and right between the two where it should be um, so they measured it quite quite perfectly um, in the amount that they actually give you so it comes like like this now in a little pack some of the older jack machines um, I have two other ones uh, they used to come with a package like this which was uh, I guess the reason they're switching now to the other ones is it's more environmentally friendly to get you know less plastic and stuff right I, I keep these I've never used it so I guess I could uh, this is for this comes with the machine as well these are just uh, it's basically just packaging that comes with the machine um, for the trimmer and for the wiper which I'm actually going to talk quite a bit about a little bit later and then just some uh, mounting screws and mounting peg. There we go. Toss that back there. Comes with some tools, uh, just Allen keys basically, and uh, some wrenches. Pretty much everything you'll need to get set up with the machine. Uh, it comes with an extra oil filter, and it gives you instructions in the manual about how to change it. Um, in the manual, it says that you want to maybe use it for like two months and then change it right away. Um, but the dealer said, you know, after two years, you're probably good, depending on it. It all always depends on how much you use it, right? If you're in a factory and you're using it like nonstop and yeah, maybe two months. Um, but if you're just like, you know, using it a lot less, then uh, you don't need to be changing it like every two months. So there's the filter. Um, comes with, well, obviously this was a little test piece. All machines from Jack come with a test piece that was sewn on the machine. And then this is uh, just like paper so I sewed a little bit on the paper um, but this is just to protect the presser foot and protect the metal parts and stuff but you can always see there's a bit of a test sample and they do this with all jack machines to show you that yes the machine works and that they've, te they've actually tested it and they leave it threaded with the same um, thread so you can you know that's how you learn how to thread the machine is by you know they already leave it threaded for you and you can see exactly how it's threaded if it's your you know if you've used uh interlock machines or cover stitch machines before then it's nothing you know um out of the ordinary but if you've never done it before then it's very useful to to know exactly how to thread it then um let's see these are accessories i'm going to get to in a bit yeah so there's a funnel right for the oil um they give you this too and they give you a little bit of um, silicone oil. So the silicone oil goes up into here. Uh, just lift this and put the silicone oil there. It helps to prevent thread breakage and stuff, especially when you're sewing at high speeds. And then the manual tells you to put some in here too, and you can read the manual to see exactly where that's supposed to go. Um, this leaks quite a bit in the packaging. So as you can see, like I haven't used any, and it's uh, less than half full. So can't really expect that um, that this is going to be enough for you, right? Like either way, you'd ha you'd want to buy more. And then, obviously, all of the Jack machines come with a a little certificate telling you when it was manufactured. This machine was manufactured December twenty twenty one, and then it gives you the model number and a uh, serial number, which I've blacked out, obviously. And then, um, so <laughs> this brings us to talk about the, the manuals, I guess. 
Um, oh yeah, there's a dust cover here. Let's get some, I want to get some of this stuff out of the way because I'm going to spend some time talking a little bit about the manual and about the trimmers and stuff. It's just a, uh, it's got a jack logo. It looks like a bag. It's just a dust cover. I just put it on the machine. Um, so I must say that dust covers that they used to include with the machines were a lot, a lot nicer. They were a lot better. Um, these basically just look like a plastic bag. They're not, uh, not the greatest dust cover. I mean, it does the job, but uh, I've seen some of the newer machines now too, and they're even uh, they're even worse. Like the dust covers. I guess people don't use them because they're just trying to cut back on that. The new ones look like a shopping bag. They don't look anything nice at all. Like this looks luxurious in comparison. So then we have a parts manual. Uh, let's see. I hold that up properly. So we have a parts manual that comes with it. Um, and then another operation manual and then this comes inside it's a packing list um, it's kind of not really what we would normally consider to be a packing list because uh, it includes a lot of stuff on there that actually doesn't come with the machine and they're more like um, stuff that comes with optional uh, features and stuff so it's kind of like you know every jack machine in this model depending on what options you get would possibly come with some of this stuff the majority of it is included but there's some stuff that yeah it doesn't come with it um, and it's it's a, it's not totally obvious um, I had to go through the list and there's some things that I thought were missing and then I found and then um, on the back side um, they give you this handy guide which I say uh, a little bit jokingly when I say handy guide because it's all in Chinese. So what I had to do was um, I had to use uh, the Google Translate app, the images, and you can see kind of like I have some pencil written in there. So it's installation of the seam oil tray and then all the parts, right? So that I could, uh, this is more for when you're putting the machine, installing the machine onto a table. That That's why you would need these instructions and stuff. So um, the pictures do go a long way, but if you really want to know what it says, you're going to have to, uh, either look at this video and you can see there it says tray screws um, big I can't read my own writing I'm just gonna try to read it somewhere else big half circle oil tray uh, you know so I mean if you just use uh, the, the uh, picture translation on Google Translate it, it works well um, and then the packing list right pretty comprehensive Every screw, every washer and stuff is on here, theoretically, I guess. Um, so just a little bit of a word about the uh, manuals and stuff. Um, if you look at, um, see that on here on the machine, there's actually a QR code. And I will show you that there. See, that's the QR code. So it doesn't actually tell you what it's for it just says uh scan for surprise so not the most uh <laughs> revealing as to what it is so the surprise that you get is actually that they um give you a link to the manuals right so you can download the manuals online and that's what the surprise is. Uh, you know, if you scan it, it goes to, I think it's like explain.jack.com or something. And then you can download the manuals for any Jack machine, um, manuals, parts, lists, stuff like that. So that's what that link actually does. Um, but uh, why would you want to do that if you already have the printed manual and the parts list and stuff? And the reason is because um, I have found that when I... Uh, what I did is I, there's a lot of stuff in the manual here that doesn't make any sense. Um, and it's just basically, it's written, it's like, obviously they wrote it in Chinese and then they had somebody that doesn't speak English or understand English translate the manual into English. Um, and why I say that, that whoever wrote it, like whoever translated it doesn't understand or speak English um, is because there are certain things that like uh, sentence, like sentence structure just doesn't make any sense. So you're kind of trying to like, um, figure out what they mean when you read the manual and I found that when you download the manual from here these manuals have been updated um, so like what kind of thing am I talking about like if you look at the printed manual the printed manual um, talks about needle pitch 
and I'm thinking, oh, okay, so that's what this dial here does. It determines how far the needles go down into the machine. And why would I want to know how far the needles are going down into the machine? Like, why would I want to adjust that, right? I've never heard of an overlock or uh, a cover stitch machine that adjusts how far the needles go down. Like, usually that's something considered timing. So it's it, the the printed manual keeps referring to needle pitch, needle pitch, and I'm like, I don't need to adjust the needle pitch, but it turns out if you scan this QR code, the same instructions are retranslated, and it um, refers to it in that manual as stitch length. So it's like, okay, well that makes more sense, right? Stitch length is something I would want to adjust, but how deep the needles go is not something I typically adjust. So things like that, like in the printed manual, they're they're not translated very well. In the online manual, it's a little bit better. Um, there's another thing that in, I think in both manuals, it talks about um, encryption stitch. And uh, I think it was, this was something like one of my other Jack machines too, that I was a little bit confused. I'm like encryption stitch, encryption stitch, like what's an encryption? Or it just talked about encryption. It didn't even talk about stitch. It said encryption. And I'm thinking, what's this encryption they're talking about? Because like, you know, is it the electronics in it? Like there's encryption? Like why would you need electronics if it's just all local? I don't know. I don't know that much about security and encryption but then after me trying to figure out what they were trying to say in the manual i realized that what they're talking about was a security stitch or back tacking i think it was for one of my other jack machines so it, it takes a lot of like work and try to like you know thinking about like what what could they possibly be trying to say for you to figure out that uh encryption when they were they're talking about encryption in the manual they're actually talking about back tacking or like a security stitch um, so that's why I highly recommend that you use a QR code and that you download the manuals. Sometimes it can be better. Um, but the reason that I recommend downloading the manuals, I haven't even said it yet, um, is because what I would do is I would copy, because it's a PDF, I would just copy the Chinese characters and paste it into Google Translate. And then from Google Translate, it would give a much better um, much better translation of what is actually meant. Like you'd, you'd look in the manual and it'd be like encryption and it wouldn't make sense. But then on Google Translate, that same, you know, Chinese characters translated into English would actually tell you, oh, you know, like it, they're talking about security stitch, which you realize it's okay, back tacking. That's what they're talking about. Um, so that's why uh, definitely download the manuals, copy the Chinese characters, paste it into Google Translate. It'll uh, help you to figure out, like if you've got questions about stuff, um, there's a lot of parameters and stuff for the machine too. There's an electronic, there's an operations manual and then there's an electronic manual. So with the electronic manual, um, it definitely helps a lot to uh, have that translation because there's certain parameters that you're like, okay, what does this do? And you think it does one thing, but it doesn't. Um, another example of that was actually with my, um, with this machine here, the overlocker. And uh, I couldn't figure out for the longest time, I think it was over a year, that it's got a feature where automatically the presser foot comes up whenever it senses fabric and then it would go down so that way you can just sew like really quick, right? You don't have to worry about like um, raising the presser foot yourself. It'll just automatically sense the fabric is there. But what would happen in my case was the presser foot would come up and come down right away and it wouldn't stay up long enough. So to adjust that, there's a parameter that you can adjust of how long the presser foot stays up. But to find that took me like over a year of like searching and then eventually what I did was I went to um, the QR code website, I found the manual and that's what I did. I copied the Chinese characters from their parameters and I copied it into Google Translate and that was what revealed to me, oh, okay, that's how you adjust it. So um, that's a little bit about the manuals. Um, so going back now to the, uh, I guess we'll talk about the trimmer. Um, so installing this trimmer, I, I had, um, dealt with a dealer that wasn't very helpful that, um, said he didn't know how to install the trimmer or how to install the wiper. So I kind of was left on my own on how to do that. It turns out I was overthinking it. Um, it's actually not very difficult at all. Uh, here I'll show you there's, um, on the machine here, if we zoom in. There, there's just these screws here. There's this screw here, which is actually a little loose. And then there's another screw, uh, if you can see back here. Where is it? There it is. So there's basically just here, I'll do a zoom out a bit. So there's a screw here where this finger is, and then there's this screw here. That's all you gotta do. The screws are already in the machine, so you just gotta unscrew them, attach um, the wiper, which comes in uh, that um, popping, what's it called? the cushion paper um bubble wrap and 
yeah. yeah so you just install it on here so the nice thing about oh and then there's a, a cable right the cable just comes in here i actually have tape on here because i want to tape it up it comes with these um mounting guide or mounting screws and like a cable management thing but there's actually no holes to put them in so i i for now i just have it taped up i thought the tape was going to hold but i guess it's it's not um but the trimmer here is actually this is for um cutting the top the the covering thread um and this is actually pretty easy to install i did it in less than five minutes i had it installed um maybe like three minutes and the manual does tell you how to adjust it like what you know how like it should be like in between the presser foot and the um this upper looper here it tells you um basically like all like the the dimensions and stuff like the clearances that you should have so it comes i would say like 90 to 95 percent of the way there at least this one did yeah it was just a matter of attaching it maybe i lucked out um so you can adjust like if you adjust the this screw here on the top this one attached to the machine and then these two top screws it adjusts the angle um, of like where this lies um, here i'm going to show uh, this again here so if we zoom into here like this um, part here should be like right in between in the middle of the presser foot and this looper so you want it to lie like right in the middle and you adjust the angle of that through uh, the, this top screw, these two top screws, and then this front one. And the manual tells you that. And then these two screws adjust um, the whole distance of like the whole wiper assembly, or sorry, the whole trimmer assembly. And then this one adjusts just how far the blade goes down. So it's all that stuff is in the manual to how you how to adjust it. What wasn't in there was telling you just the simple thing of how to install it. Um, which turns out like it's not in there because it's like it's super simple very easy it's just adjusting you know just taking off the screws and putting it in yourself um, so that brings me to the um, the wiper <laughs> and I pause a bit when I talk about the wiper because um, let me just say I still haven't um, I still haven't got it like I, I it, it it's a it, it took me maybe about eight hours because you're talking about like super super tight clearances um, to to get this like to get it installed doesn't take long but to adjust it to get it to the right spot and make it work every single time it takes a lot of adjusting um, and it's a combination of like different factors different screws that you got to adjust and honestly I still haven't got it perfect like it it works uh, I had it working like ninety percent of the time. But then now it's working maybe like 10% of the time. So it's maybe there's some loose screws and stuff. Um, so this wiper, you can expect to take a lot of time adjusting it. And the reason for it is because um, there's just a lot of like super, super tight clearances that you have to get in the way of. Um, so basically the purpose of this wiper is just to grab your needle threads. You can see right now it's hanging on to the three needle threads. And the reason you want it to grab onto your needle threads is so that when you start sewing, all of the needle threads are embedded in the fabric. So it's kind of uh, a nicer look. You don't have to worry about trimming the threads after or getting them down um, in any way. At least that's what I have understood. I'm not too uh, experienced with wipers on a cover stitch machine. But basically this thing here, the, the trick is that um, I'm hoping I can get this. Yeah, sorry for the shaky camera there. But what you're essentially trying to do is to get this to clear this, right? So you can see here as I push it, sorry. It's trying to clear below this and above this and come all the way across. But the problem is <laughs> that there is a screw back here on this black thing. See that screw there? That screw likes to get stuck. It, right it likes to get stuck above there so adjusting this is uh it's yeah I, if if there's a def th that's a nightmare for sure um and how do you adjust it there it, again this is all in the manual um but there's uh the mounting screws up here that determine how far this is right um how far away it is which adjusts the stroke 
and then you have um, these two screws here I'm trying to remember these two screws are adjustable and then there's two screws on here that are adjustable also so these two screws adjust like the depth in and out and then these two adjust the height I remember now so this adjusts the height this adjusts the depth in and out and then this adjusts the vertical um, yeah so it's very tricky very very tricky to to do that um, it is in the manual the instructions on on how to adjust it um, what's not in the manual is how to install it which is basically you take out these two screws here which is attached which is uh, holding onto this so you have to temporarily remove this and then you get the wiper in behind there and then put this over top put this back over top and then you adjust the two screws so holding it all up together holding this up while you hold the wiper up while you adjust the screws not easy and then adjusting it all also not easy so um, you have to be dedicated for sure or you can maybe hire a tech that has done it a million times it's probably what I might end up doing so that's um, talking a little bit about the uh, trimmer and the wiper the rest of the assembly of the machine um, because I've done uh, this would be my third one um, not very hard you know just assemble the, the table um, the machines heavy I think it's like a hundred and I think it was 115 pounds or something so two people for sure need to lift uh, it's heavier than it looks it looks heavy but it's even heavier than it looks um, what else yeah mounting like getting it into the table is not you know not crazy difficult um, yeah so we'll talk a little talk a little bit about the accessories and stuff that that come with it so uh, in terms of accessories um, well, um, you have, uh, here, I'll go to this one. I have some tweezers. They're okay. Um, extra needles, they're size 11 needles. And this is where you see the little screws that are in the bottom. Um, you know how I said I was, miss I thought I was missing something from the packing list, but it turns out that, uh, I wasn't it was these screws here and these screws are just replacement um, they're tiny right they're tiny little screws replacement for the to hold the needles in uh, on here right to hold the needles in so if you have end up losing those screws because they're so small then it does come with some replacements now this is the fun part and I've kind of been holding the saving the best for last and here I'll go to the accessories again um, the accessories that um, that are that sorry in the catalog sorry i'm just taking a drink the accessories that are in the catalog um it says at the bottom it says optional add-on and model so the ones that are actually optional add-ons are the two on the bottom the rear puller that doesn't come with it that's an uh, optional add-on and then the um it was say three five AC models. Um, that's more for like when you're hemming shirts and you want the fabric underneath to be trimmed. Um, that's what that is. It's basically a trimmer and a vacuum that will take that extra fabric away. It'll cut it and take and vacuum it away. But in terms of the top four accessories that are on there, um, those actually oh so maybe not the top right one. But three of them do come with the machine. The top one says extended sewing bed. Um, the tape binding, that attachment does not come with the machine. And then you have the covering seam. Um, I had requested the dealer to uh, that I wanted to buy those attachments, that I wanted to buy that, because I expect I'll be doing a lot of that. Um, and it turns out it's actually included with the machine. And then the other one was the bottom hemming attachment. Um, I thought that I had to buy that separately so I asked for that and it turns out uh, well he hasn't got back to me yet I don't think he knows that it comes with a machine so we'll talk a little bit about uh, I'll show you those actually um, and we'll go back to this so here if I stand on this side yeah that's better so this here again another <laughs> right this, this is all that came with it, so I had to translate the 
Google Translate two piece set. So a two piece set of what? So this is like an extension table that you attach to the machine here. And, um, you know, it just makes the bed a little bit bigger. One of the things that I um, want to or expect that I'll use this for is I have, I used to have, I never had a, um, a cylinder bed machine before. I used to have just a regular cover stitch machine, like the flat bed. And I had a, um, or have a binding attachment for that. So with, um, I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to use it on this machine because the binding attachment usually attaches to the front of the machine. But now with this, I can attach this to the machine here. And then I, I checked and my binding attachment will actually fit right on top. So I can use the same attachments that I would use with a flatbed machine um, by making this basically, you know, extending the, the sewing table. That's what this one is for. And then this other one is similar idea except instead of extending the front of the machine, um, could you even do the front here? No, you couldn't. It extends the back. So it attaches here to the back. If you can, uh, here, I'll grab this. There we go. And I can show you here how it attaches to the back here. So you can extend the stowing bed quite a bit if you, if you need to do that. Um, so that's what these two two piece set is. Is it's basically just sewing table extensions to make it more like a flat bed uh, cover stitch machine, which poses the question that like, unless if you're, you know, know exactly why you're um, buying a flatbed machine, like if there's certain attachments or certain things you need to do, um, this seems like a better option, for, at least for me, because then I have, I have the um, cylinder bed, so I can do like, you know, like thin like sleeves and stuff. You can use it for leggings and stuff also. And then whenever I need to, I can always use the attachments and just extend the sewing bed. So kind of the best of both worlds. And finally, I'll get into this here, which is kind of, the, I save the, in my mind, it's saving the best for last. So it comes with, here, I'm just going to take some of this stuff out. The sewing machine comes with um, a bunch of screws and washers. Like all the screws and washers. Uh, what camera am I on? On this camera here. right here so all the screws and washers that you could possibly ever want is what this comes with it's it, there's there's quite a bit there's a lot then we have um, this which isn't mentioned in the parts list anywhere and isn't mentioned in the manual uh, it's not mentioned anywhere as to what this is and I by chance happened to find out online by looking at a parts website um, for cover stitch machines that this is just a replacement for the lower loop or needle guard um, so I guess that is a common part must be a common part that goes on uh, on cover stitch machines so that's what this is it's just a replacement for that um, an extra one it's not really an accessory and I guess Maybe you'd probably need a tech to install this, but for whatever reason, they include it and you have an extra one. So put that in here. Then this one actually does, it is listed on the parts list. It comes with an extra uh, needle plate. And th this needle plate is meant more for, um, sorry, give me one second. <coughs> Uh, just have to cough. This needle plate, um, depending on what model of machine you get, the needle plate will be different. The what, like the extra needle plate that you get, and this extra needle plate is for more heavy duty um, type stuff. And you can see 
like even just from the thickness like the weight of the metal it seems like it's a lot more heavy duty the one that's installed on the machine is like a shiny aluminum it seems like it's a lot thinner a lot lighter um, so why you would change that i haven't discovered yet but it does come with an extra heavy duty uh, needle plate then this in combination is actually uh, if we go back to the accessories there uh, it's that second one on the left so this is useful if we put them together like this here i'll try to come on this side if we put them together like this it's basically like a guide for when you're doing um, top covering seams and you would put them on the machine like you take this piece out here here i'll show you i'll grab this So you would take this out and then you'd put these, uh, you'd screw these into there as a, a replacement, just like you can see on the, on the accessories there. Um, so that's what, that's what these are for. And uh, I did test this out. <clears throat> I have some samples that I uh, tested with it. Um, so I did this pretty quick. This is like upholstery fabric. Um, yeah, let's get rid of these accessories. So this is like an upholstery fabric. Uh, and just by sticking, you know, two ends of the fabric, um, here, I'll use this one for as an example. You know, you just stick the two ends of the fabric in the machine like this, and then it'll seam it right down the middle. And that's what basically this did. So I put two pieces like this, and it joined the two pieces for me with that covering stitch on the top. And then that's what the back looks like. So the back, you can see that there's some parts that are a little bit uh, wider than others, a little bit I, I missed, um, but that's just a matter of adjusting that attachment. I, I literally just put the attachment on as quick and easy as I could and then tested it. So that's a pretty good result, I think, for not having it adjusted it at all and a really nice finish. Um, the thread, <laughs> I picked yellow and red because one, because it's thread that I uh, don't typically use very much so if I waste a lot of it I'm not not concerned about it and two because uh, the contrast right you can see a lot of the contrast on it so very neat um, for doing you know top covering this is upholstery fabric the reason that I did it on upholstery fabric is because when I tried using a thin jersey like this one uh, it was it was very hard it was very difficult to like just to get it in there um, so the way I actually did this one is just in your typical normal way that you would do it, which is you, you know, take two pieces of fabric, overlock them first, and then do the covering stitch on top. So this has actually been overlocked first and, um, yeah, you can't see anywhere where it is, but there's the top, right? And this seam again, this is, a like a thin cotton Jersey, but it's been overlocked first. And I still use that guide cause I basically just. Um, stuck the overlock stitches that overlock seam into the guides there and then this just came out super nice and super quick is the is the main thing really so that's without like any you know crazy adjustment or any uh you know fine tuning or anything like that so kind of impressed by that then um so yeah yeah that's these these here and the last is very common uh, I don't usually see these attachments looking like this um, but it is a common thing which is you know you just attach this to the front uh, where is it right there and it's just basically your hem guide uh, let's go back to this um, so you can see on the where is the hem guide the second one so the middle row on the right hand side it shows you the hem guide so a lot of times when you're hemming t-shirts and stuff that's when um you would use this here right and yeah, i'm going through so many uh <laughs> so many different cameras and stuff so here if i i'm gonna do this again i have them set up so i might as well use them right so here we have this where you would um there's just two screws here on the top you attach them there and you have one guide this one on the right 
which uh, you can adjust also using the screw. And that determines the width of your hem. And then this one here is just a guide for, um, obviously it's gonna be right along the right or the left needle here. Um, and then that way, you know, that's that's the boundary of your of your hem for hemming, like the bottom of t-shirts and stuff. So it's basically like a hem guide. Um, very, very handy. So that's that. And uh, I think we've gone through um, a little bit of a list on the wall here. That's why I keep looking up at the wall. Things I wanted to go through. So we went through the, just a quick overview of the machine. Talked a bit about the manuals. Uh, the trimmer and the wiper assembly, accessories. Uh, I did the oil already. Um, so yeah, all that's left is I'm just going to show you a little bit of some sewing on the machine, and uh, you know, just do a quick. Oh, the hem guide. There we go. I do have a sample of the hem guide, um, of using the hem guide. So this was my first time using the hem guide, and um, I just I tried to see if I could sew really quick with it without looking right so just like you know let's just see if the guide does the work for you um, obviously you wouldn't really sew that way like you'd be looking at what you're doing but if you do um, you know here's a pretty good result right it's a little bit not uh, straight <laughs> the the straightest but considering that I wasn't looking and I just used the guide you know that's the top so the bottom you know you can see here that's a pretty nice hem it's right you can maybe in this part here you can see a little bit I don't know what you call it in English um, I, I watch a lot of YouTube videos in Spanish so I know what they call it in Spanish in Spanish but in Spanish they call it pestaña which is like a eyelash basically so like when the fabric I mean, you don't, you don't want to have the hem sometimes you don't want to have the hem right on the edge you want to have just a little bit of a of a lash of a you know end of the fabric so I it wasn't perfect because as you can see on this side here I did miss it a little bit but again considering that I was just trying to go you know full speed and not look um, that's a pretty quick you know hem so it, like I expect that when I uh, use it while, while I'm looking and not at full speed that it'll be quite handy to use and uh, it's pretty apart from the fact that it's not you know totally straight it's a pretty good looking hem so the hemming attachment definitely comes in handy. Um, so now, without further ado, uh, oh, here, I'll show you this. So I do have, like, tons of, you know, samples that I, uh, you know, just test stuff. I've been testing, 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 testing the machine. I tested a single, you can see it here. So obviously the thread's not um, balanced, but I did test a um, chain stitch. There we go. So just you know, a bunch of testing and stuff. Mostly, I was doing this while I was uh, I needed to sew um, to test the installation of the wiper because the wiper was giving me a lot, lot of trouble. So that's why it's like you know, so many like short seams because I just wanted to test the um, the trimming and the and the wiper. So I'm just gonna grab some fabric. And we will do some test sewing and we can test that out. So here there's some fabric. And I'm sure everybody wants to hear what does the machine sound like. So keep in mind that the uh just some cotton jersey here. Um keep in mind that the wiper is not attached properly. It's not working the way it's supposed to. This is not supposed to be hanging on to my thread. I'm not getting, there we go, it's this. I'm not getting the covering thread. Can't get this on. Front. That's okay, we'll do it without for now. So we missed a bunch, but here we go. Needs to go. Grab my tweezers. Oh, good, you can see that. I 
just lost my uh, top covering thread, threading of it. This is tricky to do when you're trying to stay out of the camera, and I don't know if I even am staying out of the camera that all that well. I want you to be able to see. There we go. Let's just loop this around for now. Okay, let's try again. Like I lost a thread. No, it's not. Something's not right. What's not correct? I don't know. Threading looks okay. I'm just following the thread to see. Okay. I might be losing. Oh, you know what it is, I bet? I bet you got it's this. I lost my lower looper. Not the most interesting thing to see somebody thread a machine, but I guess you get to see. You get to see it anyway. It's Let's see if hopefully I don't have to bring it up. if it'll bring up my looper for me. Nope. No, I got two of them. I didn't get my top thread, and it seems like my knee, middle needle thread is come undone. It's funny, I had spent a lot of time setting this up, making sure that it was ready to go. And then uh, I get surprised at the last minute. Once I get this wiper set up properly, then I think it'll be a lot better because then I won't have to worry about hanging on to threads or, or losing, losing my threading that much. Around. Hope you can still see that. Let's get rid of this. It's a mess. You can see, I don't know if you can see, but I'm sitting sideways. I'm, I'm trying very hard to stay away from the, the camera, so. What does that look like? Yeah, I think that's good. this away from the wall a bit. There we 
There we go. There's one good one. One that's uh, just here. Uh, do one more. Looks like the wiper mostly worked on uh, on that one. So you can see here, every time I stop, the needles are stopping down, right? No matter, right? Every single time I stop, they stop down. And if I change that, parameter mode, right, 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 right. Change parameter three, and then change it to Up. one. Setting done. So now the needle should stop always up. Yeah, see how it stops up? No matter where, it's always going to stop up. Parameter mode. Ne right, right, down. Setting done. See, it always stops down. And then I cut. So let's uh, see some samples here. So I have a long one, which is top and bottom covering. This, this is the, the top, right? The one on the top there, you can see that uh, part of it, this was the last one I did, started with just three needles. And then at the end of it, it added the covering. And then the one on the bottom is just three thread without the covering. And then if we look at the bottom, they all look the same on the bottom, right? Because that's that's going to be your looper thread with however, well, three needles. Three needles and your looper thread. So on the bottom, they all look the same. And on the top, they're, they're different. So still need to do a little bit of adjusting and, you know, obviously getting more familiar with the machine. But my, you know, the intention of the video was just to give you a general overview of the machine and kind of give you my first impressions. Um, this is the third Jack machine that I own. Um, so I have um, the, what do you call it? The, uh, this one here, I'm holding up. But I have this in here, the K5. I have um, the uh, overlocker here and then I have over here uh, the A, A5 uh, has a suction device underneath it so um, clearly I like the Jack brand if I <laughs> this is the third one I bought um, they're good they're for me anyway they're good machines that come with a lot of automatic features that make sewing a lot easier um, I've had the A5 now for since 2018 so five years um, still going strong you know no no issues with it whatsoever uh, overlocker I've had since 2020, so three years on that one. Um, five years, three years, and then I think this one's like three weeks or something. So um, haven't had a lot of time to play with it, haven't made anything with it yet. Just been uh, honestly mostly spending my time, you know, like with that stupid wiper, trying to get that wiper adjusted properly and trying to get it installed correctly, um, which clearly I haven't succeeded at doing yet. Um, but yeah, uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Uh, you'll definitely be seeing these three machines in some of my videos up, coming up. And um, I guess that's, uh, that's it for today. So thanks everybody for watching my video and uh, for watching the live stream. Um, and that's it for today.